Hello everyone, my name is Fox. In this video, we're going to be talking about Intel's latest Lunar Lake chip and specifically how this one chip is going to change PC gaming handhelds with their one simple trick. Before we get too far into this, first a shout out to PC World for getting this information because seriously, without them, we would be completely in the dark with what is actually special about Lunar Lake at all. There's a bunch to talk about and I thought I would make a video that's going to be positive first before we start getting in, not to the negatives, but more just to the expectations of what we should really anticipate regarding Intel's Lunar Lake. So before we get into that, I wanna quickly hear from you in the comments section, see if you can see what's going on with Intel's Lunar Lake, and if you can see the secret sauce that is happening. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the video from PC World's video on YouTube. The link is in the description field below if you're interested. Now, when we're taking a look at the comparison between Meteor Lake and Lunar Lake, I want you to pay very close attention to what's going on. Both of these are framed capped at 60, Tell me if you can see specifically where things get very interesting. So I will be checking the comment section. If you guys said Intel's auto TDP, Congratulations and pat yourself on the back. You're a part of the hardcore. Yeah, if we take a look at this, Intel's maintaining of 60 FPS and fluctuating power based on hitting that FPS cap is really good here. This is exactly what we want to see when we would say, hey, I just want to hit 60 FPS, make sure this game hits 60 FPS and put whatever power into the system to achieve that. Look at how good Intel's system does this. This is something that is not found on AMD's handheld platform, at least so far on the Windows side. This is something that we have to use third-party tools, or we do it in a kludgy manner with either just hard setting a GPU clock frequency or a CPU clock frequency, or just setting TDP and forgetting about the whole thing and letting like something like VRR handle whatever we need. This is excellent from Intel's side, and because Lunar Lake is doing so much better than Meteor Lake, we have a lot more headroom, because even when 15 watts to 17 watt, Obviously, this thing can go much further. You look at Meteor Lake and it's going up to 30 watt. This is going to be its tail end of where, where it, its power limit is. So we're going to start seeing diminishing returns after that. But inside of Lunar Lake, we still have a lot of headroom left. It's going to be remain to be seen how far we can go in any given direction. Obviously, we don't have any other information than what we have currently. But if we take a look at how AMD fares in this situation, just with using like their AMD chill, it's terrible. We are using a tremendous amount of power and really, we're not even getting any real benefit for the FPS cap. The FPS cap is kind of fluctuating all over the place. Frame times are terrible. And you are going to be wasting power doing so. So there is no real purpose to ever set an FPS cap on AMD, either using RevaTuner or their AMD Chill. So just looking at this particular scene, this is not ideal in any sense and not something I would suggest. However, we can easily tune this up so that we're actually using significantly less CPU package power and we get a better result and something that's a little bit more in line with what we should expect comparing it to Lunar Lake. So that's what I did here. I actually tuned up the system myself so that we're hitting a more consistent 60 FPS frame cap. However, I put a very hard clock limit cap, which means that we're going to get an FPS reduction in some scenes. However, the amount of power that we're going to be using will always stay consistent. So when we take a look at this, we're going to be getting a pretty consistent 60 FPS when we're taking a look at AMD's 8840U Hawkpoint versus Lunar Lake. If we take a look at the package power, you're going to see we're going to be using around 10 to 11 watts for CPU package power. And even though Lunar Lake will be going from 15 watt to around 18 watt, you have to remember Lunar Lake includes the RAM inside of that package power scope, which AMD's 8840U does not. That is in the total system power, and that's why I also include it there. If you were wondering what type of total system power Intel's Lunar Lake is using, it's basically going to be the display, the fan, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi. So those three things are gonna be what we would consider the extra from total system power. Realistically, you should anticipate anywhere from like two to three watts. I would just say, generally saying two watts is like a good middle ground. So if we just say two watts extra over whatever Lunar Lake CPU package power is, that's a good idea on what its total system power is going to be. So if it says it's using 15 watts of package power, I would anticipate it's gonna be using around 17 watts of total system power. And if it says 18 watts of CPU package power, anticipate somewhere close to 20 watts of total system power. However, 
That is really good when we think about what AMD's hook point is using, because even though I'm only using 11 watts on package power, I'm often using 20 watts of total system power. So we're using around three less watts, generally speaking, all the time on Intel's Lunar Lake system and getting far more consistent 60 FPS experience. Now we can talk about the comparison between Intel's Lunar Lake versus Hawkpoint, AMD's Hawkpoint, but the reality is that we're not really getting enough data here to offer a valid comparison. Number one, Intel does very, very good on 3D Mark type of benchmarks versus AMD. So Intel should be doing better, generally speaking, on 3D Mark tests. Until we can get more games, we are not really going to get a really good understanding of where these guys compete. The other thing is, is that I only have AMD's 8840U Hawk Point to test. I do not have Strix Point to test. So we're comparing against Zen 4 RDNA 3 versus Zen 5 RDNA 3.5. So we're basically taking a look at Intel's Lunar Lake, which is not going to be available until quarter three of 2024, to AMD's last generation, so a year prior. We're going to be literally, we're looking at something that is a year difference between these chipsets and where Lunar Lake is sitting right now overall isn't that much better over AMD's previous generation. So when we think about where Strix Point is, unless there's some serious regressions going on with where Strix Point lands, we're going to have to see what happens with this. So that is another video that we're going to have to be talking about. For this video, I actually wanted to just be very positive because the MSI Claw 2 that is going to be using Intel's Lunar Lake is looking to be pretty positive. There are going to be things that we have to talk about, and I'll do that in a separate video so that you can be all aware of the expectations to anticipate from that particular device. But I just wanted to be on a little bit more of a positive side, and I think Intel at least has a first good showing finally with a handheld-like chip. Thank you very much to my Patreon members as well as my YouTube channel members. I hope this video was informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.